After the contents of Mojang's cave update were essentially split into four updates, I felt as if there could have been more to it. I personally wanted to see more cave biomes. But understandably, Mojang doesn't want to add cave biomes for the sake of adding more for no reason. So in this video, I'll be showcasing my own cave biomes, structures, mobs, and more, with a bit of a different presenting style than usual. All of which is coming to my upcoming mod, Zatrix's Vanilla Plus. For future updates on this mod, subscribe to stay tuned. Enjoy the video. To start us off, let's take a look at the Frozen Depths biome, usually generating underneath colder biomes. We are trapped in the deepest depth I have ever recorded underground, standing on the bedrock layer that holds our world up. A bit of our resources have survived this anomalous event. Still, they are not enough for a pickaxe, tool or weapon of any kind, and we gathered what we could to begin our journey back up to the surface. We chose a random direction within a series of branching tunnels, finding the mouth of a cave that's mostly frozen. Large boulders of blue ice littered the space with patches of snow scattered around. Some areas of these caves can be blocked off the ice, with some having thin ice covering deep caverns. So trade with caution. Some zombies have grown a bit more accustomed to this environment. We've never seen them before, so we'll be calling them Frostbin, which can slow down whatever it hits, as well as giving mining fatigue, which is very interesting. We found an abandoned miner's cabin of sorts within this biome. There's not much of note really, just some furnaces alongside a chest and crafting table. No bed though, so this could have been used as some sort of checkpoint for operations. Who knows? All we should care about right now is that we have retrieved some materials from the cabin to aid with our way out. After some further searching and exploring, we have found a more anomalous biome. We're given it the name of the Red Haven. It seems to be a large deposit of redstone that, over time, eroded into sand, cobbled redstone, and more. The more anomalous aspect of this biome would be the two entities that we are calling the Redstone Bug and the Redstone Cluster. The Redstone Bug seems to be completely made out of a redstone electrical charge that's dispersed through some redstone ore within the biome, which hasn't got much of a difference, apart from the fact that the redstone ore does not dispatch a charge if interacted with, unlike normal redstone ore, which is a bit of a giveaway once learned. The Redstone Cluster, on the other hand, seems to be more passive. Some have been spotted within this biome. Our current hypothesis is that they form from discarded redstone pieces, mainly items that are made of pure redstone. We're not sure how or why they form because of these pieces being cluttered within the area, but it seems to be only within this biome. We found a few more miners' cabins, but they seem to be different from any outside of this region, with experiments on redstone functionalities, which help us understand some of the newly discovered materials found in this biome. I think I can see an opening to the surface. I should get the others. The surface is relatively the same for the most part. We've done some travelling to a few biomes and noticed some new structures, like a jungle well, which we didn't get too much of a good look at, as it was filled with overgrown. One thing to note would be a new ore, Jade. It's biome specific like emeralds, but generates only in jungle biomes, bad land biomes, mountainous biomes, the deep dark, and the creeping cavern biome. Jade seems to be for building purposes, apart from their use in magic based crafting too. Jade, when paired with marble, which we've only found in specific biomes as well as jade, like mountains and tiger biomes. Using the spark of life that we could temporarily get when visiting the Wild village, lent to us by the wonderful golem smith there. They seem to have a big project they've been working on. They're calling it the furnace. Oh. 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 I kind of like it, honestly. When raw jade is combined into a block, it kind of looks like camouflage. Pretty weird stuff. We searched in the nearest ocean and eventually found that the mushroom fields have developed what we are calling mycelium caves. We're not sure if this has any correlation as of yet, but the stems of the giant mushrooms here are different to that in the dark oak forests, having more tree stump-like formations, which can be used to create a unique whitish wood set. These caves hold strange new additions, like purple and orange mushrooms, which themselves can be grown into their larger counterparts. There are also glow shrooms and white mycelium within these caves, along with a small amount of fungal plants to go with them, including something we're naming the death cap mushroom. It's a deep purple in colour. When touched, it gives a heavy amount of poison. Maybe we could use it for combat purposes, but we're not too sure as of now. There's a strange noise coming from the deeper part of the cave. It sounds almost like crying. It's disturbing. Yet, my morbid curiosity got the better of me, deciding to follow it. Finding an entrance to a sort of temple, barred off with white fences. I broke into the structure and found nothing but mycelium, mushrooms, and finally, stumbling onto what we're calling the Mitocept. 
It seems to not move until tempted or angered, swaying as it stands in place. We did find a small squad of pillagers nearby, so we captured them and forced them to shoot the mitocept for the sake of experimentation. Upon being hit, the creature rushed over and in one hit instantly took out the pillager before returning to its calm state. One of our team members, nicknamed Wither, came down into the cave after hearing the sudden sounds holding bone meal, which for some reason tempted it, making the mitocept slowly follow her. It didn't have malintent this time, so we decided to lure it out of the cave and up to the surface, which had some very interesting results. When it felt the sun on its skin, it started to sound happier in tone, noticing the mushrooms nearby. Apart from its terrifying stature and face, it seemed to like it better up here. We fed it a little bit of bone meal, with it eventually doing this weird pulsating thing on the spot, spreading particles to the nearby mycelium. Eventually, one of these particles quickly grew into the offspring of the mitosept, which we're naming the mini-sept. They're pretty cute, leaving mushrooms of their variant behind them as they walk around for a short while after being fed. They'll frequently interact with the mitosept and do little dances to each other. We've created quite an interesting system, but soon we'll have to leave. Onwards to another discovery. The magma chamber's biome seems to be a sort of pocket of lava with magma, basalt, and volcanic ash also being present, uh, presumably being part of a volcano that was covered over time. Um, I've noticed that some ores like coal, gold, and diamonds uh, generate a little bit more here, which is good, considering diamonds anywhere else seems to be way more scarce than they used to be. Another thing of note uh, is that obsidian, a smooth obsidian, can be found here, generating naturally, which can be a great and easier sort of obsidian. Not just for crafting, but building too. I might have heard something strange sounding coming from the lava, but I'm sure I'm hearing things. Or at least I hope. Rogue and I have decided to make our way to an ancient city. We've had experience with them before, so we should be able to take on anything new. I'm going to record most of these away from the general area, for obvious sound-related reasons. But from what little peaks we've had before this expedition, it seems pretty similar, with Rogue always adoring over the architecture there. I might have seen an urn similar to the ones we've found in dungeons nearby, possibly at a sort of outpost. It helped us figure out the city was nearby in the first place, so it might be important. There's been talk about possibly being able to harvest souls from a Skulk Shrieker, which apparently can be used to create unique golems like the Ice Brick Golem, alongside other things. But until we can figure out how to harvest one, we don't know much else about this. So we'll see if we can get that alongside anything else that's different inside the city, baby. Update. I have retreated to a safe space, without Rogue. I heard him screaming, screaming about this massive thing. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't a warden. I think it had been stalking us throughout the ancient city, very slowly. But once it caught up to Rogue, it made this weird noise, like it summoned a warden without the need of a shrieker. I knew we were there for too long, but Rogue just kept admiring everything, and now, and now, there's something different about the city center. It's like that thing is protecting something. It appears to be eight blocks tall, with a long neck that connects to its head, donning a large glowing eyeball to spot intruders. We do not know what similarities it shares with the Warden, possibly being able to sonic boom if attacked, as it didn't attack Rogue until he hurt it. Stay the hell away from ancient cities, unless you want to join Rogue. His Jade Golem's gonna miss him. I don't think it'll follow us on our journey, so it'll be waiting a long, long time for him to come back. Rest in peace, brother. You will be missed. This last cave biome we have is an interesting one to say the least. We're calling it the Creeping Caverns. It seems to be the home or the origin of the Creepers. Creepers themselves seemed different, like their skin was made out of a darker, chunkier moss. There's a lot of it here. There's lots of interesting things living here for a cave biome, like grass and ferns. There's a seemingly native flower here that looks similar to the spore blossoms on the roof above, but they glow and are relatively smaller. We've decided to call them dahlias, but as a warning to anyone who is listening to this recording, don't let them distract you from the denizens here. First, we have the burrow creeper, which can be distinguished with its slimmer appearance and glowing red pupils. As its given name suggests, it can burrow and hide in the creeping moss below, leaving its eyes and the top of its head to only just poke out. If it spots prey when in this mode, it will wait till it gets a bit closer to jump out before advancing, meaning you only have a few seconds to run away before it detonates. 
Next, the bloated creeper, made especially clear by its enlarged, disproportionate body and its sunken, saddened eyes. Alongside the sloshing sound it makes when moving. We're assuming this variant is more of like a deformity, probably lost the ability to detonate properly, due to a possible organ that produces sulfuric bile leaking, leading the bile to spill out upon its attempted detonation. This bile liquid is everywhere in this biome, with it being hot to the touch like lava, and being a haven for creepers alike. We assume it's like their foundation of life, as water is ours. Another stage of creeper variation, either through mutation, age, or something else, we have the volatile creeper. Volatile creepers are a little more intelligent in some facets, ramming their head into their target to provoke them. Once they die or are set on fire, they quickly detonate. Their body is covered in strange orange lumps, which isn't the only obvious giveaway to their variant. They could serve as a form of clearer way to show that they're guards for the creeper nests, which I'll talk about later on. We found a strange sort of structure that seems to originate from here, with the variant within this biome being a lot more overgrown, which we're calling the creeper crypt. It seems to be either an outpost and or burial for creepers that pass away, possibly returning them to the creeping moss that makes up the biome, which poses more questions than answers. We haven't been able to determine the full details as of now, so we may attempt to approach this structure later on. As mentioned, there's another structure that we haven't seen enough of, the creeper nest. It seems that, somehow, creepers have crafted or stolen resources to mimic pre-existing architecture, with the main room of the nest containing the mother creeper. We haven't been able to see much of the structure. One of us may attempt to infiltrate the nest later on. I will store later updates in our database soon. If you're new to the world just like us, we're doing our best to document as much as we can to help understand this new variant of our world. Thank you for watching! I hope you guys like this different form of reveal for content for the Vanilla Plus mod, as well as the great voice cameos from my good friends. If you have any ideas for future changes, or just general questions, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already, check out the previous video where we showcased our revamp of the dungeons and temples that'll appear in the mod. We haven't shown everything planned as of yet, so stick around for them. Hope to see you in another video, but until then, have a good day or night.